today I bring you the agile and interactive project management methods uh, as, a, as a topic. Um, first of all, I would like to say that I am not an expert on these topics, but I do use some of the principles and some of the ideas uh, that, that this framework gives us. So, so what, first of all, what is actually um, agile? So agile is a kind of like a combination of different techniques uh, with, uh, and you might see some of these keywords popping around. If you Google these terms, you might see Scrum, Kanban, Waterfall, and so on. And, and what these terms kind of uh, convey are just different strategies to organize and to plan a project. The, the agile uh, principle or the, the agile um, kind of uh, framework um, also has a manifesto. Um, and you can find this manifesto on the agilemanifesto.org website. And, and the name uh, itself and the, the process is mostly uh, focused on delivering content as quickly as possible uh, to minimize uh, like bureaucratic steps or um, things that are not direct, directly going to produce an output. And so, for instance, the, the emphasis on um, prototyping and, and working solutions rather than documentation um, or, or, for instance, um, actually interacting between people as opposed to just establishing bureaucratic processes. And, and the name itself, Agile, is, is in part as a, as a need to respond to change. Um, and this is something that you will see often in, in the business world. Um, and, and I'll explain how this kind of plays in, a, in, in the next slide. So if you're, if you're familiar with the, the more traditional um, way of planning a project, you have often uh, requirements set up from, from, from early stage. Then you have a phase where you just design and you kind of try to plan and to uh, think of all the possible situations where things can go wrong or you want to make sure that you cover all the cases. And eventually you get to a step where you actually implement um, the plan, you put the plan into action and, and afterwards you validate and you, you kind of have a, a delivery uh, in the end. Um, this approach uh, means that the time that goes between the start of the concept all the way to the delivery of the product is a very large period of time and therefore uh, it's considered a high risk uh, kind of approach because you don't really have anything until many months later or many uh, years later, depending on what you're trying to build. To counter that, the agile approach is a little bit more dynamic. And the focus is that you have these, these kind of iterative cycles where you focus on milestones, you focus on achieving small goals, small deliverables. And, and this will actually give you a, a better notion of, of progress and also a better notion of how, uh, how, how your how you're pro how you are succeeding in, in achieving those milestones. So it, it gives you both the progress and something to show and to, and to, to kind of uh, feedback on. Uh, and then from there, you can also uh, learn what worked, what didn't work, and you can kind of go back to planning and readjust if anything needs to, to be done. And so this is a kind of like a cyclical process that goes back and forth. So th this process, I didn't specifically mention this, but this was a kind of a framework that was designed for, for software development primarily, although there's a lot of things that we can learn and apply to, to other projects. And how do you actually take this to your project and how do you apply it? So you can think of it as a, as a little bit of a, a Matrioska type uh, situation where in the end, the biggest Matrioska is your final product. This is what you want to deliver, but you're gonna have to break down uh, all the tasks that you have to do. You cannot just think of a project and, and do it all at once. You're gonna have to identify small steps that you can do. And, and the key aspect in the, in the agile approach is actually to break down uh, these processes in, or these, the, like this big project into milestones. That will be like the, the intermediate level uh, Matrioska in this case. And, and then tasks or even subtasks um, or issues in the, in the case of GitHub, for instance, where you have smaller um, steps that can go uh, between one and two hours or at most one day of, 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 working, of working time. And, and so how, how could this be made into practice? So borrowing a, an example that, uh, that you set up from the, 
from the Intermind project, you can see this kind of um, visualization of, of, the, of several different issues. Each column represents a different version with an expected timeline and delivery date. Um, and then each of these little bubbles, or, or you can think of it as post-its as well, that's where the, the Kanban kind of concept comes from, uh, it has a, a bunch of labels describing what they are. It has uh, a title and, and you eventually can assign or you can move things between the panels and so on. And the idea is that with this, you have a very visual overview of where you are in the project, what needs to be done. And you can also prioritize uh, things by just moving them up and down in this kind of visual list. And as soon as something is complete, then it can be uh, hidden from this view or it can be moved elsewhere. So in this case, this is, um, is focused on a version. So each of the columns is a version. Uh, but the more common approach is actually to have kind of like stages of uh, the progress. And here I'm borrowing the, the, um, the, the project uh, from my actually, uh, so the awesome uh, Open Science Montreal uh, project where they already started using this, um, this approach. And you can see that the, the, so the GitHub provides this standard to do in progress and done. And, and you, can, you can see how you can plan things and leave them on the to-do. And then everything that is being worked on is in the in-progress uh, section with um, assigned to different people and so on. And, and one additional thing, so mentioning this, uh, this breaking down of tasks is that with GitHub, you can have not just issues, but you can also have within an issue, you can have uh, like bullet points that you can make into checkboxes. And these will be recognized as, uh, as smaller steps within that issue that you can then complete uh, and, um, and have as, a, as additional progress uh, for, for the task. And there's also a way to somehow automate this process. I have to be honest that I'm not super familiar with this, uh, but if you, if you want, there, there is a way to simplify this process further. Um, and but so in, in general terms, what 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 are these issues or what what could you make into an issue? And and so you can think of, for instance, if you wanted to make a website, you could try to break it down into creating content for the website as well as oops, sorry, as well as creating or uh, finding a, a domain to actually uh, have as, as the address for your website. And there you would have to, for instance, um, decide what domain that would be, agree between everyone, eventually purchase that domain and, and set it up as, um, uh, as, as the redirect for the GitHub account. And, and similarly, you would have um, to create the content and then the different parts of actually uh, creating the content, how you would go about it and the different sections of your website and so on. And you can think of each of these bullet points as an issue. And you could even think of these inner ones as for instance, these uh, checkboxes that I was mentioning on, on GitHub, for instance. And so um, there's also a, a live demo that has been set up uh, by, by, by the OLS team um, before. I will make sure to add that link to the to the uh, HackMD, and uh, and I'll add some additional resources as well if you want to read a bit more on that. <laughs>